Good evening and a very warm welcome to our service of Evensong. We continue worshipping God with hymn number 376. Would you please be seated? The love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Spirit which was given to us. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness. And that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. In us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults, them that are penitent. Thy promises declare unto men. Grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment 
to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people being penitent the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. O oh Lord, open thou our lips. And the Lord shall show forth thy praise. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to save us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord this evening's psalm is Psalm 42, which is found on the separate white sheet.
first reading is from 1 Kings, chapter 19, verses 1 to 15a. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid. He got up and fled for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on the hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant thrown down your altars and killed the prophets with the sword. I, I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. This is the word of the Lord.
second reading is from Luke chapter 8, and it's verses 26 to 39. <clears throat> then they arrived at the country of the Ger- Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me, for Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the word of the Lord. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let 
let us pray. Show thy mercy upon us. O oh Lord, save the Queen. And do thy ministers with righteousness. O oh Lord, save thy people. And let thy Give peace in our time, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, make clean our hearts within us. collect for today. O oh God, the strength of all of those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merits of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. And together we pray. Lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, some of you may have been wondering if we were going to explore our, our New Testament reading that Zach read for us so beautifully. It's one of those really difficult passages in the New Testament. But I'm going to be a complete coward this evening. And we're going to um, journey into that lovely reading from the Old Testament from the first book of Kings. And we're going to do something slightly different. Um, no, if you were hoping that you'd get the opportunity to play the um, is, um, Elijah journey game that we used in Breakfast Church this morning, sadly, no, we're not going to be doing that tonight. Um, maybe some other evening. And you may be one of those who get stuck under a broom tree for about 35 rounds of the game. Now we're going to um, explore that reading from 1 Kings, but we're going to explore it with God, with some quiet and stillness and moments for reflection. So I'm going to talk for a little bit, and we're going to have some stillness, and then I'll talk for a little bit, and then we'll have some stillness, and sometime around about midnight we'll finish. Um, Nick's not here, so we can get away with it, you see, this week. Have you ever had a mountaintop experience with God? That's what Elijah had literally just had, had been a mountaintop experience. Confronted the, the prophets of Baal. Fire had fallen on Elijah's sacrifice. The Baal prophet's sacrifice was still there. Baal prophets had been driven away, put to the sword, as our reading reminds us. But other things had happened. The long drought on the land had ended. At last, there was rain. At last, there was the end of what felt like divine punishment. This was a new era for God's people. As I say, a moment of triumph. In your life, in your life, can you think of mountaintop experiences you have had with God? Maybe it was at a Christian conference. Maybe it was away on retreat. Maybe it was a cathedral service or a special answered prayer. Think back. Think back to that mountaintop moment. How do you think about it today? What did it tell you about God?
after that mountaintop experience, Elijah came to a realization, an unwanted realization. Jezebel and Ahab, queen and king, um, were not going to change their ways. Jezebel would bring in a new set of Baal prophets. You have to see them more as sort of mercenaries, soldier priests, than of as godly people. That they would hunt him down. That this new situation was just the beginning. Elijah was very pessimistic. He was over pessimistic. And in his concern and in his anxiety and in his pessimism, he was distracted from engaging with the one person who could put everything in perspective. He didn't spend time with God. What distracts you from spending time with God? What are the things that you focus your mind on and time on that distract you from engaging with God? In Elijah's fear, in his despair, he takes flight, he runs. But his fears went with him. He heads south. It's quite a long journey that he's making. He heads south. He leads his servant. He heads further and further on. And then then he runs out of his own energy, of his own strength. He can go no further in his own power. And so drops down, sat under a broom tree, a common or garden desert tree. His point of 
giving up. Some of the times when you've run out of doing things in your own strength, in your own energy, when you have sat metaphorically under a broom tree thinking, there's nothing I can do. Elijah had not looked to the one place, the one person who meets us in those places, the one person who can provide, whether it's fear or flight or despair. So there, under the tree, an angel comes. There is hot cake. It's not a lemon drizzle. It's a, it's a loaf, a freshly baked loaf. I'll tell you something about broom trees. This is a piece of information. Broom trees make amazing charcoal and burn really hot, really hot. It's great if you want to bake bread. There's something else about broom trees you really are in the desert and really are surviving, you can gnaw on the roots and draw sustenance from them. I wonder whether Elijah knew that when he collapsed under that broom tree. But God provides. Can you think of a time when God has provided for you? How did it change your situation practically? But also, how did it make you feel? What did it say to your heart, to your soul? Elijah eats and drinks twice. He goes on a journey for 40 days and 40 nights. It's a long time. We live in a culture of instant gratification. Fast food, instant communication, prepackaged, throwaway disposable. A secular set of values have infected much of our faith life as well. Scripture 
often speaks of a different time frame. Women and men of faith spent not just days, but often weeks and years waiting for God to answer prayers or fulfill his promise. We think of examples of waiting that you can recall from Scripture. Why didn't God just meet Elijah where he was? Why did he have to journey on? And how often have we thought, I wish God would do something now? And we found we've had to journey on. And 40 days and 40 nights have been long and hard. And after those 40 days, Elijah comes to Mount Horeb. He's left Mount Carmel. He's traveled south a long way. He's come to Mount Horeb, to the place, tradition says, Moses received the, the Ten Commandments. And the first thing he does there is he, he goes into a cave. He looks for shelter security, somewhere to get a kip, goes into the cave. Uh, and, and God's been speaking to him. And, and the lovely thing in this reading is we, we see God speaking in different ways. We God sp see God speaking through the angel. We see God speaking into Elijah's conscience. And God speaks and says he's going to speak to him more. And there is earthquake, and there is storm, and there is fire. God isn't in the fire think of the burning bush where God spoke. Well, he isn't in the fire this time. Think of the storm like those around Horeb when Moses is up there. God isn't in the storm. There's numbers of earthquakes in Scripture. God isn't in the earthquake. And we come to that, that passage. We're so used to the translation, a still, small voice, aren't we? I think those of us who've been Christians for a long time, we're used to the, it being translated, a still, small voice. But it is probably much better in the NRSV. It's a time of silence. After all this, all this waiting, then all this amazing expression of power and awesomeness, then there is silence. Elijah doesn't give up at that point. I love it. He goes out. At least he's remembered some of what he's learned because he wraps his mantle around his face so he doesn't see God face to face and with all that that would involve. He wraps his mantle around his face and God speaks to him might feel like it's a long time since those mountaintop experiences you reflected on earlier. But there are other mountaintops ahead. And God speaks to Elijah as he does to us in the mountaintops. And God says, go. It says a little bit more than that. But he says, go. I've got a plan got a purpose. Don't worry. I'm God. I'm in charge. 
all will be well. It's God's message for you and I. Go, do what I call you to do, because I'm in charge. It's safe. All will be well. Let's just reflect for a few more moments on that. God's message to you, that all will be well. stand and sing together number 115 dear lord and father of mankind <laughs>
Let us pray to God, the source of all authority and power. We pray for the church and for the world. Keep your church faithful to the pure truth of the gospel. Sustain your church with faith in the power of Jesus Christ. Grant to all Christian people the assurance that Christ lives in them. Give to those in authority the wisdom to know that all power comes from you alone. Fill them with compassion and a true desire to work for the good of those they govern. Look with mercy on the world where injustice is often done in the name of law. Fill all people with the spirit of generosity and openness to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us give thanks. We give thanks for the many blessings that are bestowed on us. We see the joy that family life brings to us and those around us. We welcome the way in which our own community has opened its arms and its homes to refugees and continues to do so. We give thanks for the ways in which those we help, help us in turn. We give thanks for the blessings of friendship and good company together. May we continue to recognize the beauty of your world and all that is in it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those in need. We pray for all those in need, the lonely, the fearful, the weak, the despairing and the oppressed. We pray that each life may be redeemed by love of God and love of neighbor, and that together, we may share in each other's joy. We pray for our family and friends. Give grace to us, our families, our friends, to recognize the presence of Christ in all we do. In our lives together, make us witnesses to the love that he brings to all who follow him. Have mercy on the sick in body or mind. May our doctors and nurses and all engaged in the work of healing have confidence in your power to restore health and strength. We pray especially for Peter Brough. Have mercy on all who mourn, especially for the souls of those who have died recently and for their friends and family. We particularly remember Frida Clues, Elwyn Ellis, Brian Rutledge, Jennifer Woodcock, John Clough, Kenneth Beresford, Leslie Lewis, Michael Hind, and Joan Belfield. In the presence of Christ, we offer our prayers through him, trusting in his love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. I don't think there are any notices tonight. So we're going to stand and sing our offertory hymn, Father, Lord of all creation, 356.
the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.